So I was connecting with a business owner earlier today, and she was essentially talking about how she's like, my family is messing up, my kids are mad at me, my husband is up, and my business also needs to happen. But I also want to, you know, also have a personal life. And I see that you go running, right? She's referring to, you know, how one of my posts that she saw recently where I went running the other day. And she's like, yeah, I used to go running and I loved it and I don't stand, but I don't do that anymore. So like, Vanessa, how do I separate business and personal? And tonight's episode, we're going to go into how to not think about your business 24-7. And we're going to what I told her and what I'll share with you today on just answering all the pretty much many of these questions. How do you separate business and personal? How is it that I'm finding the time for running and world watching, right? How do you not think about your business 24-7, whether it's in the startup phase, growth phase, or stable phase? How do you not lose your mind, right? Trying to make your business happen while also trying to have a life at the same time. So these questions came to me today from that business owner, but also a few people. Um, and so tune in. For the rest of this episode, we're going to go into the answer that you've been looking for. And as always, at the beginning, every episode of Entrepreneurship is a Marathon with yours truly, Vanessa Zami. What has been your win of the week? Comment below. What has been your win of the week? And so my win of the week is more of a business win, business or personal, but share it in the comments below. My win of the week has been... Uh, I see the quote from a client saying that like, you are excellent with in caps. Um, and she's like, you're excellent at your job. Like, I know this is what you do for a living, but this is like, you are excellent at this. Um, and she emailed that to me after the, some email changes that we had. And when she says, you know, my job, what does that mean? Right. Essentially, my job is what I do here at Business Defibrillator as a founder of Eurovision's Catalyst Consulting Company to keep entrepreneurs moving forward in their business and getting them unstuck. And so by my job, right, she's meaning being a business advisor for her and being her sort of strategic board, her sounding arm or sounding board, her strategic arm when she's looking at what to do next for her business. And as she goes through the week and the days and the months to making her, taking her business to the next level, right? It's been around for a couple of years. I'm taking it to the next level. And so when she says, I'm excellent at my job, that's what, that's what it is. And so it's just always lovely to get those messages and those notes from the clients. And if you're a product-based business owner or service-based business owner, you understand, right? Um, it's really great. It's always a nice win to know that what you're doing is great and amazing. And so what has been your win of the week? And so type that in the comments below, what has been your end of the week? And now maybe you will tune into this tonight because it's popped up in your feed. Maybe you tune in tonight because someone shared it with you. But either way, Welcome to Entrepreneurship is a marathon every Tuesday, 9 p.m. Eastern with yours truly, Vanessa Zami. And here's a 30-second summary of what we're all about. My name is Vanessa Zami, the best-selling author of Finish, The Solopreneur's Guide to Getting Stuff Done. I'm the creator of the Hustle and Breathe Business Accelerator, through which I consult ambitious nine to fivers like you on how to grow their profit-producing, purpose-driven business without the overwhelm. Your efficiency, your productivity, and profitability so that you can reduce the overwhelm and confusion in your life. You can enjoy your life. Entrepreneurship is a marathon. And if you chose to step into that marathon, yes, let's go, let's go. So why this episode? Why are we talking about how to not think about your business 24-7? Well, as the story I mentioned earlier of this episode, I'll repeat it again, but when you think about to that woman who she's asking me, this business owner, she's asking me, she's a full-time entrepreneur, right? And so I work with corporate professionals who are working to grow their business while doing their day job. But the woman I spoke to even earlier today is a full-time entrepreneur, right? I think that people who are doing many things think that, you know, time is their issue. And if they just gave up one thing, time wouldn't be an issue. And the thing is that even full-time entrepreneurs have an issue with time. <laughs> even, even they come to me like, Vanessa, how are you doing it? And what's the direct to my heart is every time I see someone, you know, an executive, or CEO, founder, entrepreneur, passionate and brave enough to really take that step into entrepreneurship and to really start that business and make it go. And, you know, they're showing up, they're doing all the things, they're committed to the mission and their purpose and to their impact that they're looking to make, but they're not getting the traction that they should be getting or the traction that they want to be getting. And so they're angry, right? They're like, oh my goodness, I don't get it. What's happening? Maybe it's me, maybe it's a business, whatever it may be. And there comes a point in time where they kind of are, they seemingly, seemingly are kind of at a crossroads, right? But it happens sort of like every couple of weeks or so. And it's that moment when, just like the woman I mentioned earlier today, where she was in the space where, where you know, she was just like, I, like, this is, my husband and kids are mad at me, but my business is also coming up. And I'm just like, oh, and I'm traveling a lot for the business and all this other stuff. And OMG, I don't get it. Like, how do I, you know, pretty much, and pretty much for her, it was looking like, she had to like quit one of them, right? In her mind, she was like, it was kind of like she had to quit one of them, right? But then she saw a post of me like running, but also having a business. And she was like, how does this chick do it? I must ask her, right? And so 
what I love is being able to help people see those new lights and being able to see that they can help them see that you can sort of have a life and also have a business at the same time, right? It's not mutually exclusive. It's not a, well, in 10 years when my business reaches a certain amount of income, then, and then only then, right? Like, no, some of you guys are doing this while you are parenting, right? Right? you are, you know, blossoming in some relationship of yours. And so it really is important for you to ensure that you're taking care of all parts of your life, the love, the health, the wealth, all at the same time. And it can be done. And so what did I tell her, right? So at first, I started out by telling her about non-negotiable stuff that I was, I was telling you guys about. Just like, you know, scheduling your non-negotiables, freaking out, what is it that's important to you? And, you know, then to make sure that you actually put that in your calendar and put that in your agenda and, you know, schedule it in there, right? And so the reason why I brushed her through that, because essentially that wasn't her issue. She already was doing that. She was already putting in her non-negotiables into her calendar. She was already aware of, okay, I know I want to run. And I like running. I know I want to go to the gym and have a trainer and do all that jazz. I know I need to have date night with my husband every night on every Friday night at this time. I know that I want to be with my kids having dinner at 6 p.m., right? She already knew all that stuff, and she had already sort of penciled it in to her calendar, right? She had a paper calendar, paper journal, so to speak. Her. She had already penciled that into her calendar. Her issue was not that she didn't know what her, her non-negotiables were. The issue was not that she did not schedule in her non-negotiables or her personal priorities. Her issue would, was that, okay, in the sort of, so she's not in the startup phase anymore, but she's in a phase where her business is like growing and she's like thinking about how to take to the next level. And so she has this team of people and her team would inevitably, or partners or collaborators, they would inevitably just like bring something up about the business. Right. There'll be there'll be something that would come up for her about the business and they would, you know, be like, oh, hey, did this, all oh, this and that and this and that email, this text that. Right. And what she would do and what she was doing is that she would just cancel her personal priorities. She'd be like, oh, something came up in the business. I'm just not going to run tomorrow this morning. Oh, something came up in the business. Oh, sorry, babe. Can't make it to date night. Oh, something came up in the business. Oh, oh kids. Sorry. I'm not going to be home for dinner. Right. And here's the fact about life, though. And, you know, we're going to go into what I told you to solve that. But the fact is that something will always come up in your business. It doesn't matter what phase of business that you're in, whether you're in the zero figure phase, the five figure, the six, seven, eight, ten figure phase, there will always be something that comes up. Now, your level of responsibility when things change is going to, you know, change. Right. Or the level how much or how little you have to show up when those changes happen. That will change throughout the time. Right. And if you're doing your business right. But it's still going to be there's some level of responsibility that's still going to be there. Right. When something comes up in your business. And so that's always going to be a fact. It's not going to like, oh, well, once you get the business to this income, then you don't have to worry about anything ever changing. It's all going to be smooth sailing from there. That's not how that happens. And so what's really important is that you need to just prioritize you. Right. You need to prioritize you. You need to understand that you are the glue between everything happening in your life. And if you don't function, nothing else will function. Right. We're going to go into two ways for you to ensure that you're prioritizing yourself um, and or to sort of philosophy that you need to put into place. And so because at the end of the day, and something that's a reminder, it's like, yes, yes, absolutely. People are coming to you for the questions to your business because you're still in that phase where perhaps you can't, you know, have a co another president or CEO, right? You are the president CEO, people come to you with the problems. Absolutely. Right. But you also are at liberty to prioritize yourself. Because you are no good. She's not right. As essentially tell her, and I'm gonna tell you, right? You are no good to anyone. If you are out here not prioritizing yourself, not doing what it is that you need to do for yourself, because you are the glue keeping your personal life your and your business life together. And so two ways to help prioritize yourself. One is, and it's going to say yes and say no, right? And I even gave her the suggestion, right? It's like if someone brings something up, you can say, I'm going out for my run, right? If you don't mind heavy breathing, happy to handle and hop on the phone with you, right? And so in that situation, she's saying yes to her run, but at the same time saying yes to handle the situation. Right. Or so she's saying, going out for my run, happy to connect afterwards. Right. And then, but here's the second thing. Here's the second thing that a lot of people miss out on and sort of like forget in a sense. It's about being more efficient with your time and energy. And what does that mean? Valuing your time. And what does that mean? And so she's no longer in corporate space. She essentially left the corporate space and then now full time in her business. Right. And so have I. And so I have a few of my clients as well, too. Some of my clients and some of them are on their way to. And maybe you've, either left already or you're making your way to leave, right? But you probably remember, because she remembers it and I remember as well, right? You probably remember just those, those meetings, those meetings that didn't need to happen, right? Those meetings that you always like, why did this meeting take a whole hour? 
right? Or those meetings you were in that was so unorganized that you just daydreamed the entire time. And then you ask your colleague what, what happened, you know, and it was like, you didn't really miss a thing, <laughs> you know, or those meetings that literally could have been an email or they could have been just like a, a five minute conversation in the kitchen. And so I challenge her, just like I would challenge you, is that as a CEO of your company, start setting that example of company culture. And, you know, in the sense that if that meeting is going too long or you can see that in the first five minutes, it's not going anywhere then value your time and politely walk out or space out, right? But value time, just politely walk out of the meeting and make it known that your time and your energy is valuable. Because for her, and maybe it's also for you, but for her, that extra 30 minutes in that meeting means less time answering emails during that time, which essentially means that she's gonna, which is gonna mean that it's gonna seep into her staying later at work to answer any emails that only she can answer, right? And working in the business, which then leads to less time with her kids and coming later from, from home, which she doesn't want to have happen, right? And so essentially it's like that extra 30 minutes is less time in her personal life as well too. And I think about what is that extra 30 minutes worth to you? And so if you find yourself, you know, this thing about that time when you're in a corporate life, when you when you sit in those meetings, it was just like, what in the world? And so sometimes those things that are being, those fires that are sort of coming up that seem like fires, right? And those fires are just coming up, those urgent matters, whatever it may be, Chances are, it's not that urgent, right? But those fires that are coming up, chances are they can be handled in a phone call. They can be handled in a 10 minute email, right? In an email, or not 10 minute, a minute email, right? They can be handled in a 10 minute call. And chances are you're, you might be sitting in those meetings that are taking an hour, but they're not taking an hour. And so value your time and value your energy and just say, you know what? I will step out of this meeting. Let me know if no, you guys are ready to get it together, right? Or just be, make a priority and tell your team. Only, you know, address me, just have those key checklists or um, key checklists or process of documents that are saying, okay, only contact me, X, Y, Z, A, B, C, right? And if you have a team of people, chances are you need to think about the decision sort of approval process of things, right? And how is it that decisions are being made? And are you the bottleneck of that decision, right? If, are people coming to you because you set a, a standard that they need to come to you? <laughs> and, you know, and are people coming to you because they just think that they have to come to you? And in your mind, you're just like, why are they coming to me? I don't get it. They could have handled this on their own. And so sometimes they don't know that. And so you need to be that leader and stand up and actually say, you know what? This only contact me for X, Y, Z. Do not contact me be before 8 a.m. I'm on my run right? Unless it's like the world's going to end because of it, then by all means, contact me at like 7.30 a.m., right? Or don't contact me on this day, on that day, or I'm only available to reach during these hours, right? Or at 6 p.m. every single evening, I'm at home with my kids. I will not be answering calls, but you're welcome to reach out to me and I'll get to you after 7 p.m., right? But set that standard and live in that standard because your personal life is as important as your business life. And so, and if you don't take care of it now, when you get even more, when you get when that income keeps on growing, it's not gonna ha get handled then. <laughs> okay, it'll be even harder. And so ensure that it's never too late, but it's never too late. So you need to start today and right now and being more efficient with your time and energy and valuing your time and energy enough to say, you know what, I know what's important to me. And yes, it's the business, but it's also your relationship, your marriage. It's also your kids. It's also maybe you're in the same generation. You have to take care of your parents as well too, right? Your aging parents. But be, realize that and honor that, right? And it is something honorable. And the thing is that, let's say you're, because for her, for example, for my client, for example, she mentioned, okay, I'm going to try it for this week, but like next week I'm going to London. I just like work all the whole time. Just, I'm traveling around um, and some business conversation. I'm just like going to be in London the whole entire week, right? So I just going to do business the entire week. And it's like, but you don't need to do business the entire week, right? And I was like a big aha for her. Um, but like the thing is that hotels have gyms, right? And so think about the ways that even if, or you can schedule time with your kids, right, at 6 p.m. Maybe you're not there physically, but you can still, still schedule that time at 6 p.m. to connect with them. And as well as these, it's just a little, it's a little tweak, right? But it's a little extra effort, but that other person will appreciate it, right? Because they'll see the time that you're making and they'll see the energy that you're putting into it, right? And hey, if you're at that happy hour dinner with the business colleagues, oh, 7 p.m., sorry, y'all, gotta go make an important phone call. You don't have to put details. Got to go make an important phone call, okay? And then you just go at 7 p.m. and make that important phone call. And that's really what it comes down to, right? It's valuing your time and valuing yourself enough to say, I'm going to prioritize myself. And the things that I schedule, the things that I need for myself, I'm going to make sure that they happen. That's it, <laughs> right? Because you understand that if they don't happen, then you cannot show up as efficient, effectively as you can.
right? You sitting here in the business meeting like, oh, yeah, mm mm-hmm, okay. That's not helping anyone. You need to ensure you're showing up as high performance as possible. And you don't need coffee to do that, right? So ensure that you are being able to prioritize yourself and saying yes to yourself and valuing your time enough to know when to say no. And notice how she sought out help though, right? And she reached out for it, for it right? Because she could have just been like, maybe something has got to go in my life, right? I don't see how this is possible. But she went looking and she was like, ooh, Vanessa's doing this. Okay, okay, let me ask her, right? Don't sit on your problems by yourself, right? The reason why you didn't, right, is because the reason why you're canceling things, the reason why maybe you're deciding to put your business on pause, whatever it is, it's only because of yourself, right? Try to make things happen. Maybe maybe you're not trying enough to make it happen. Maybe it's pride that's keeping you from asking for help or seeking out the support that you need. Maybe you didn't know that that existed. Maybe you don't know that other business advisors exist, right? Maybe you think that people are just on stage by themselves without a, a team backstage or without people on speed dial. No, that's not a thing, okay? Maybe you're like, oh, I can do this myself. No one's doing this but myself. It's doing this but me. The fact of the matter is every entrepreneur, everything you see out here, no one's doing this by themselves. They're not. And whether it be their supportive spouse or their, you know, kids, like helping them out on the back end, or it's that, you know, this person that they've hired to help them to be that sounding board and just be that person that they reach out to for mindset stuff or business stuff, marketing stuff, whatever it may be. But no one is doing it out here, but well, actually, but no successful person is doing this by themselves. Let me put that. Okay. Let me be more specific. And so ensure that you are getting the help and support that you need. And I have, if you're looking to find the person for you, by all means, you're welcome to add time on my calendar power.bzami.com. Let's connect. Let's figure out what is going to, what's why you're stuck, what's getting you stuck. Let's get you a clear path forward on how to get unstuck and clarify your messaging, your marketing, your offer, your site, understanding, you know, your experience and how you really get your business to where you want to be from where you are today now, right? While at the same time, taking care of yourself in the process, right? This is a big part of what I do with my clients, helping them take care of themselves while taking care of their business. Because as I mentioned this episode, right? You are your business. You need to prioritize you, but at the same time, you prioritize your business at the same time, right? And it can be done. Balance is achievable, okay? And so if you're looking for more support on that and how to ensure that you're taking care of yourself and your business at the same time, ensuring that you're moving forward in the right way for your business, right? Especially this is the end of the year. You're probably in the final push the last two and a half months. You're probably thinking about next year, 2022, what do you want it to look like? How do you set up the next three months so, so that it can look like that in 2022? then by all means, happy to connect further, power.bzami.com. Let's connect. Let's figure out where you are, where you got to go. Let's get you a clear path forward. With that being said, have a beautiful, abundant rest of evening and a week. And chat with you again next Tuesday for Entrepreneurship is a Marathon. Every Tuesday, 9 p.m. Eastern with yours truly, Vanessa Dami, live on Facebook or LinkedIn. And if you are feeling this episode, by all means, react, comment, share, all things um, in order to ensure that more people who need to see this and hear this get this message as well so that they can keep moving forward on what it is that they're meant to do. No reason why, you know, there's no like, oh, I can't be an entrepreneur, et cetera. If you started your business, if you have been working on your business, then chances are there's entrepreneurship inside of you. Okay. And so it's not, it's not you, but it's definitely how it is that you're doing things that we need to fix and we need to change and we need to solve for so that you can ensure that you're bringing life back to you and your business. So reach out to me, the business defibrillator, and let's get you underwhelming your overwhelmed power.vzami.com. Chat with you again soon.